Hey guys, guess what? I can't stand the CCP. But I don't think that my feelings towards this horrible tyrannical regime is a surprise to any of you. However, I don't think I've ever really fully explained to you guys why I detest this horrible government so much. Now of course I've spoken about this several times over on my YGZ Taiwan channel and please go and subscribe to that channel if you haven't already but I've never really gone into it here on Shield Busters so in today's video this is exactly what I hope to do to tell you why I can't stand the CC bloody P. Now this sounds really weird but I have a love-hate relationship with China which I think I need to explain to you. In order to explain this, we need to go right to the start of my relationship with China. So let's go back in time to the year 2007, and a young, fresh-faced Lewis was planning his first trip to go to China. I had no idea that that one trip would change my life forever. So, I had some friends who had moved to China in 2006 to teach English. I managed to get some time off work to go and visit them, and I hopped on a flight and headed to a city called Chengdu in the southwest of China. Here I am on the flight, on my way to the trip that would change my life forever. And please excuse the one pixel footage that was filmed on a potato, but it was 15 years ago, and people didn't really have decent cameras on their phones at this time. I was a broke young guy with a potato for a camera that I got free with my laptop and it took two AA batteries. Anyway, let's forget about the camera. I had a great time on that holiday. I saw some awesome things. I saw a country that was opening up and full of opportunities for a young guy like me. The month holiday flew by and before I knew it, I was on my flight back to the UK. During the flight, I couldn't stop thinking about the amazing time I had had in China, and I made up my mind there and then that I was going to do whatever it took to move to China and live there for a long period of time. When I got home to the UK, I searched for jobs online in China, and I found one straight away. I quit my job and jumped on a plane and headed back to that country that I was so curious about. I went on a tourist visa, but that was no problem because it was easily changed into a work permit when I arrived. This was the China of that time, where it was so much easier to move around and there were a lot less strict rules. It was a lot easier to do anything in China at that time and for the first time in my life, I felt free. Perhaps it was the independence of living on my own in a strange foreign land. And of course, I'd lived on my own in the UK, but being so far away from everything that I was used to was so liberating. Plus, did I mention that I actually finally had some money? A disposable income, even though my salary was so low, something ridiculous like 6,000 RMB a month, I still had more than enough money. I could afford to go travel into some amazing places like Yangshuo in Guilin and still be able to have some money. Rent, food and bills were also extremely cheap. Life was great. Now of course I'd heard many things about how terrible the Chinese government was. The censorship, the oppressive government that stifles freedom of speech, this invasive government that tries to control every part of its people's lives. I even saw some examples of this, but I always put it at the back of my mind because I was happy. As long as it didn't affect my life, then everything was A-OK. -okay. As time went on, I started to improve my life in China. The salary was way higher than I could ever even imagine. And although I was always leaving the country for extended periods of time, sometimes even taking long holidays in other countries, I would always return to China because that was the place I wanted to be and that was the place that I called my home. When you live in China for long periods of time, you start to become desensitized to all of the ridiculous and terrible things you see. Grandmas just letting their grandchildren urinate up against the wall. No problem, nothing to see here. Street food store owners getting beaten up by security guards. His stool getting trashed right in front of your eyes and you don't even bat an eyelid. Those are other people's problems. And if you do step in, you could get into trouble. This is the apathy amongst the people that the CCP has created 
where you don't step in to help your fellow man, you just ignore it and get on with your life. It filters down from everyday life into the more serious problems in the country. It's that hopeless feeling that nothing can be changed and anyway it's not my problem right? I was selfish. I saw the news that was happening in Hong Kong. People's freedom was being taken away and more light was being shed on the cultural genocide that was happening in Xinjiang. And of course I talked about these things with my colleagues at work and other foreign friends, but it felt like there was nothing I could do about these problems, so I just put my head down and selfishly got on with my little life in a country that was being governed by a government that goes against almost everything I believe in. You see, I can't stand censorship and suppression of freedom, which stems from my teenage rebellious punk days, and here I was ignoring all of the problems in China. <laughs> I wish I could go back in time and punch that selfish twat that I was back then. But anyway, if I could go back in time, I think there would be a lot more important things than punching the selfish Lewis that lived in China. So I was happy just being that selfish, apathetic idiot, just enjoying my time in China. So what changed my mind? Now I would like to say that it's because I'm a hero and I wanted to stand up to the evil CCP and fight for a just cause, fight for the Chinese people. But unfortunately, that's not true. I think that people in general only start to care about something when it has an impact on them. None of those terrible things that I was seeing on the news really had an effect on my life. Out of sight, out of mind. But that all changed in January of 2020. It was spring festival holiday time in China, and there were rumours of a virus going around, which I read about just before I hopped on a plane from Dalian to Beijing for a much needed holiday. Like I said, there were rumours of this virus, but don't worry, because it's not transmissible between humans, and that's exactly how it was being reported. Nothing to see here, just get on with your life and don't worry about this crazy virus that the media are using just to scaremonger as usual. I arrived into Beijing, and everything was normal. But over the next few days, places started to close down. Shops, restaurants and other entertainment venues. It was now mandatory to have a temperature check when entering places. I decided to get the hell out of Beijing and went to visit a friend in some little village in Shandong province. When I arrived, the road was blocked by some makeshift barriers, but I still managed to get myself in and I stayed at my friend's house for the night. I woke up the next day, I was constantly reading the news on my phone about the virus. It was really stressful. So I decided to get away from all of that stress on the news and go for a walk by myself in the countryside just to clear my head. It was a very rural part of Shandong with dirt roads and not much going on. There were a few little shops here and there, but the majority of the place is farmer's fields spanning as far as the eye can see. I walked through the village and headed towards some farmer's field just along the main dirt road. Suddenly, a black car with tinted windows drove past me. It braked hard, turned around and pulled up on the path beside me. A Chinese government looking guy got out of the car and I just want to quickly explain what I mean by a government looking guy. He had this polo shirt on, tucked into his trousers, one of those sept wolves tacky looking belts and some keys jangling from a chain attached to the belt. He approached me and he asked me where I'm from and what on earth I'm doing there in such a small village. I told him what the deal was and he seemed quite satisfied with my answer, got in his car and drove away. I carried on walking for a little bit and suddenly out of nowhere some motorbikes zoomed up behind me and they all surrounded me. Off hops this very aggressive guy shouting and swearing and saying that I have the virus. Before I knew it I was surrounded by a bunch of angry villagers, it was like a witch hunt. I explained to him what the deal was but he wasn't interested, so I just tried to walk past just to get away from the situation but that only exacerbated the situation further and he would not let me leave, he was just blocking the path. Eventually the police showed up and thankfully the situation was resolved and honestly this was the first time I was actually happy to see the police in China. This was my first real experience of xenophobia in China. 
Now, of course, I had experienced the usual people pointing at me, calling me a foreigner in the streets, and the usual being ripped off when I'm trying to buy something in a shop when there's no prices attached to it. You know, they give you the foreigner price, but nothing as serious as this. It really was a terrible and dangerous situation, and I wish I could say that it got better, but it didn't. So after this harrowing experience, I decided it was best to head back to the city I live in, Dalian, and the best way to do so was by the high-speed train. When I boarded the train, I realized that my train carriage was empty, and when I say empty, I mean absolutely nobody else at all was in the whole carriage, apart from me. A part of me thought that I was sat in this empty carriage because nobody would sit in the same carriage as a foreigner, but I could be wrong about that one. I was a little bit paranoid and I was starting to read news articles about how foreigners were being blamed for the spread of the virus. When I arrived back to Dalian, almost everything was closed. Restaurants, bars, clubs, everything was closed. My school was also closed down and they were not sure what was going on and I had to teach online classes. There were a lot of restrictions of movement coming into place and I was refused entry into quite a few places that would usually be fine to go into. The building where I lived even implemented a rule where you could only leave the complex once every two days. It was madness. The final straw was when I started to see videos online of people being welded into their apartments and people being carried off against their will to these makeshift hospitals because their temperature was too high. I was starting to think, what if my temperature is just high one day, I've got a headache, I'm not feeling very well or something, what's gonna happen? This was my wake up call. I booked the first flight back to the UK and got the hell out of China. This is a massive problem in China. The government there can do anything they like on a whim. Say anything you like about the lockdown in the UK, but there were no people getting welded into their homes. So this is what changed me. When I was out of China, I started to find my voice. I woke up and I found a new appreciation for my freedom to express myself. Something that was impossible to do in China. And I realized how important it really is and why it's so important to talk about the problems in China that are caused by the CCP. Like the whole coronavirus thing and how they tried to cover it up. Because the Chinese people are not allowed to talk about these things. And yes, governments all over the world have done and still do some terrible things. So shouldn't I be talking about that? Well, my answer to that is that at the very least, other governments around the world, my country included, allow criticism from us normal people. Look at the Prime Minister's questions in the UK, where every single Wednesday, the Prime Minister is put under the spotlight and gets grilled by the opposition. This would not happen in China. People are allowed to protest in the UK and discuss politics openly. The media is not controlled by the government. And you know what? As cheesy as this sounds, you can actually make a change, or at least you can try to make that change. There's some sort of hope, but not in China. The last time people tried to make a change, well, we all know what happened with that one. I would like to say that when I make my videos, I'm speaking for those billions of Chinese people that don't have a voice, but I'm not doing that. I'm just voicing my own opinions about a government that I can't stand. A government that doesn't allow freedom of speech and doesn't accept any criticism from its own people or anybody else. Which is why I've decided to give them a little bit of criticism with Lewis characteristics. And do I regret leaving China? <laughs> Absolutely not. Look at what's happening there right now with all of this zero COVID madness in Shanghai. People are being forced to take COVID tests every few days, being forced to stay in their homes, and if you are allowed out, which is not very often from what I can see, you have some silly QR code on your phone dictate to you where you can and can't go. This is the absolute control that the CCP wants. And it seems that I got out just at the right time. And besides, if I didn't leave China, I would never have had the opportunity to see the beautiful country of Taiwan, one of the freest countries 
on this planet with a thriving democracy, a fine example to the rest of the world, and in particular, the CCP of how a country should be. So I hope you can all now see clearly why I can't stand the CCP, and why I'm making videos about these things. And if you're one of those people that thinks I'm anti-China and a racist, then maybe one day you might have your wake up call too. Thanks for watching today's video guys, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. You can also check out my Patreon and now there's a members option available on this channel so you can become a member for a very small amount of money every month and you'll be able to use the funny emojis that I've made so if you're interested go and check it out guys. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next one.